Hello everybody, welcome back to Crypto Atlas. Today we're going to be talking more about ORCID. Seems like you guys have been showing a lot of support for the previous videos when we talked about this. And I also have a big interest in this as well. Before I mention anything else, just so you guys know, I am not a financial advisor. I can't give you financial advice. Take everything that you hear with a grain of salt. Always do further research. And if you guys are new to the channel, please don't forget to hit subscribe, especially if you've seen one of my videos talking before. We'd love to have your guys' support. And don't forget to hit the like button on this video. The more that we get engagement, also if you guys can drop a comment down below, all that is gonna help us out in the search and discoverability to not only increase the discoverability of our channel, but also specifically of this video. So we got a couple new updates that we wanna talk about here with Orchid. First off, we got a 3.55% increase at the moment. That's looking pretty nice. Plus, if you guys recall from one of my previous videos, I went ahead and drew up this little chart here for you. So as you can see, we can we had a setup of a resistance going across this line here on the daily. We did have an explosive move. Wish that we had a little bit more time to be able to see some consistency because this big price increase was very recent but we're still trying to make do with what we got. Now, what's interesting is that when we got this descending triangle pattern, we had this setup, and guess what? The way that we designed this, we saw a breakout, and it actually happened right near the very end. There's a large increase in volume down here. It did push past the top end. It was actually more of a bearish design of what we were seeing, but I did mention that if any kind of relevant news has come out with Bitcoin going up, Ethereum going up, um, along those lines that we could very well see this starting to explode. And so for me personally, I actually bought the dip. I bought more going in. I didn't look at this as like a pump and dump type scenario <clears throat> where this heads to next. Still, anybody is, it's their guess. But we can look at some of the indicators and kind of try and prepare ourselves for some of these directions. So I'm gonna adjust some of this stuff now just to kind of show you how this has moved. Our top line here, uh, well actually that's our bottom line. We're gonna go ahead and move our top line here. On the daily, we can use the top of the candle wick. We actually haven't had a close for this date today and we're pretty close to the top, but we're gonna go ahead and set that there for now. And you can actually see that we can lower this just slightly, setting up more of a standard right there. If I go ahead and zoom in a little bit better, you guys can see that. So it's extended itself out we have a slightly higher high now for the next region zone. If we were to try and test this and it was to have a continuation on, what kind of price points could we see? We could be seen pushing up towards, once again, the 90 cent range. Looks like around 85, 87. Uh, that's right in the range where we're gonna see the 0.236 on the Fibonacci retracement. And as we go down further closer towards the tip, if it did wait to the last moment here, then we would be seeing more of a test on the 0.382. I do really like the setup for this Fibonacci retracement. As you guys can see here, there was a bounce off of the 0.382 back here on August 17th. And then we also had a bounce off of the 0.618 on August 21st. And uh, we pushed just right near, it almost tested it for the 0.786 as of August 28th, which is uh, more or less today's date. New day started at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time off of this chart here for the tradingview.com. Just FYI, if we were to see it push down, this kind of becomes mute and irrelevant because we would be going towards essentially nothing. I mean, it'd be negative. So we're not, we're going to be pushing down to 0, 0.0. Uh, I mean, anything's possible, I guess. This is actually over at about eight cents, nine cents. Could it happen? Yeah. Is it likely to happen? I don't think so. We see this big consolidation zone where it was around 14 cents for quite a while. We saw 18 cents and the market itself is starting to boom more. And yeah, you might be wondering why did it have this big push up? Well, for one, from a technical analysis standpoint, we were basically at that breaking point. The volume was already starting to diminish and at some point it needs to have a reversal. We saw a big, huge interest here as of back on like the August 15th, 16th time period, which was good indicators that there is more demand for what one reason or another. We did see a big sell off as well, but that did not happen all in just one day. The next day is we had a continuation down and that was actually reflective of the whole cryptocurrency market. We saw Bitcoin, we saw Ethereum, we saw many of the other cryptocurrencies going down, including Chainlink. 
So on the other side of the news, if you actually head over to the blog, blog, not block, sorry, blog.orchid.com website, you guys can see here as of yesterday, there was an announcement that BKEX is now listing OXT. And one of the things that they mentioned here is that it's an exchange with a large Mandarin speaking user base. Deposits are open and trading begins August 28th, which is actually today's date, and they show the time. BKEX provides service to over 1.8 million users in 208 countries around the world. We're excited to have OXT listed on BKEX, which is one of the leading exchanges in the Chinese-speaking community, said Dr. Stephen Waterhouse, ORCID's co-founder and CEO. This listing can help spread the opportunity to explore the internet and privacy to more people in more parts of the world. New users can open ORCID account by purchasing at least $4 in OXT and $1 of Ethereum on BKEX. Once the account is created, shareable QR code will appear that contains account credentials. Anyone can copy or scan that account into the app for a simple one-step setup. So this is a VPN, if you guys didn't really know, basically it hops. Instead of just utilizing one VPN service, it adds a little bit more privacy elements for you because it's um, not using just one VPN. It's hopping from one to another, to another, to another, and you don't have to pay for a monthly subscription fee. You can use it on a case by case basis. And when you take a look at places like over in China, well, do they really have much of a demand for something like this? And when you take a look at some of the more recent news, such as this, it's talking about how there was $50 billion that was moved out of China very recently in cryptocurrency from East Asia addresses to addresses in other regions. And this is primarily because of the outflow. Uh, it's got a limitation over in China. They say that you're only supposed to be able to do $50,000. A lot of people over in China want to invest in real estate in other countries, such as the United States, other businesses. And there's just that big limitation for them when they have restrictions like this. So because of the higher levels of scrutiny over in China, something like a VPN might be more popularized right around this kind of a time based on the state of the economy. This is stuff to be keeping in mind, right? When you're making investments, one of the things that I've learned from hearing speeches from billionaires is that you're looking into the future. What is the economy? What is the world going to be like a year and a half from now? Not what it is at this exact moment. If you're looking at something as a project that you're investing in and you want to be able to accrue as much benefit long term from something like this, then you need to be looking into the future a year and a half and trying to see how everything is kind of building what direction. As far as for what B VPNs that are currently in China, according to this list, it's suggesting that there's ExpressVPN, NordVPN recently, Surfshark, and a Viper VPN, and Hotspot Shield. So this is from August 10th, 2020 from Comparatech. You see, as far as for the VPNs in China, if it's even allowed, because they are more of a like communistic country, right? The Great Firewall of China restricts users from accessing the free and open internet. A VPN can be used to browse freely, but few actually work in China, making the best VPN for China hard to find. But you got a good number of options here. So it's not like this is something that's illegal that's going into China's space. It's just something that might be a little bit more beneficial as far as the application itself goes. So this news is very bullish. When you go onto another exchange, that means that there's an opportunity for more demand. The supply hasn't really changed much. And when you increase demand and you keep supply the same, guess what? You're going to see an increase in price. So with the price movement of Bitcoin over here yesterday, we did see a little bit of a climb up. As far as for today, we're down just slightly as of this moment. It's been hovering right around the $11,500 range. And it is important to note that a lot of the market tends to move with Bitcoin and with Ethereum. So I'll have other videos where I talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum. In fact, I do have a video that I just made yesterday that I think kind of flew under the radar. And it's really important that people check this out. I'm going to have it pop up right up there on the top of the screen. You should see it. You can click on that to go watch it. And it talks about why realistically one Bitcoin can hit $500,000 per coin. And I make it very relatable to a lot of stuff that's already going on in the world where money has already been placed, how many people hold Bitcoin, all of that big shebang, shazam, good stuff, right? So as we transition, the next big thing to keep an eye on is going to be for Sunday. Sunday is going to be a weekly close. And for Bitcoin, it is a very pivotal moment. We want to see if it's going to close above 11,100. Because if it closes above 11,100, that is a bullish indicator. And the next range we should be seeing it push towards 
would be hopefully around the $16,000 range. So that is very important. If it closes below 11,100, then we should be seeing it potentially moving back down to around the 10,500 level and then might even going down to the 9,600 level past that for the CME gaps, which, you know, it's up to you guys as far as if you buy the dip, if you don't buy the dip, if you hold on to this, if you think that it's going to go lower again, I'm not going to tell you guys how to invest in any of that. A lot of people, they tend to say what in crypto hodl or hold on for dear life. So as far as the future of this, does it look promising? In my personal opinion, yeah, this looks really promising. And for it being on Coinbase, being on uh, Kraken, on Gemini, now it's over on this other exchange, BKEX. You got Uphold recently with that news. And if you guys don't know a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, or you want to know a little bit more in the background research that I've done with OXT, then be sure to check out the other videos on my channel. It's still a pretty new channel. I've been looking into a lot of crypto for quite a while now and studying the markets. I watch the other YouTubers. I listen to their news. I listen to what's going on and I try to keep you guys up to date too. And I'm just I'm taking my experiences, my uh, opinion, my view, the technical analysis, and also what has been picked and pulled from the other people. So that's why I also think it's important that you guys do further research. I know not a lot of people don't really talk about OKEX, or sorry, OXT, not OKEX. OXT as of yet, but I feel that once this breaks into the top 100, which there's a very good chance that it will, we're gonna be hearing about it a lot more and it's become very bullish. In fact, I think one of the most bullish things that we're gonna see here in the future is if this goes to be listed on Binance. That could be extremely bullish. Bitcoin pushing up to 16,000, if it does do such a thing, is just another leading indicator to kind of strap your seatbelts in and get ready for this ride. As this makes more adjustments, I'll go ahead and make more on the charts themselves. But if you guys can, please, if you guys were looking up specifically for OXT, you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button. Please don't forget to hit subscribe. I know we're getting close to 100 subscribers as of the time of this video. Maybe we can just knock it out of the park. Mm, can we go straight? Trying to push for 200. Appreciate your guys' subscriptions. Also, if you can, because I would like to cover Bitcoin information as well. That other video I put a lot of work into. If you got some time, I really think it's going to have some great, valuable information. I talk about Jeff Bezos. I talk about the Bitcoin whales, how much that they hold, what's going on in their wallets, what's been kind of identified in the market space uh, as far as industry spaces go, all that kind of good stuff. But thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate you guys. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of OXT. Are you guys interested in it? Do you already have some? Do you have any new information that maybe I missed that you'd like to have me try and include in the future for this that you think other people should be aware of too? All that good stuff, or even if you just want to say hi. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.